My name is Sherry Jackson. I'm an instructor here at the Jim and Heather Gill YMCA of Gentle Yoga. So I hope to offer you a practice to ease the body and calm the mind. So let's begin the standing position with a little spring in our knees. We're going to start the practice by opening the lungs. So what I'd like you to do is to slide your hands along your clavicle bone and come to almost where your arms meet that bone. Touch those two points and give them a little bit of a massaging action. So we're going to be opening up the lower, middle, and upper lungs with what we call the breath of joy. Soft knees. Please avoid any movements that cause strain or any kind of structural pain in your body. It's okay to not do movement. I think it's observe them. So we're going to take a sniff, 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 and a big ha from the belly. We're going to do that about five times. The louder the ha, the better it will be. So soft knees.
Two more rounds here. Opening wide. Draw them in, and one more time. And we'll explore that again when we're down on our mat. Now keep those free your knees moving into Tadasana. Turn your palms forward. Let your palms stay forward, and think about that nice wide open bean shape. And let your arms slide back down, bringing your knees. Take a nice wide breath. Emphasize that exhale as you come down. We'll try a few more. Moving in and out of Tadasana, feeling the breath and the movement as they come together. Both in the eyes, letting go, surrendering. Any image that works for you to bring a calmer mind, more relaxed body. You can rise up on your toes as you open those palms widely, spreading the fingers as well. We'll try that two more times. Spreading the fingers, opening the chest, taking a good breath. Really, really elongating our exhale. And one more time. Let that all go. Roll your shoulders. Now coming down to your mat, and if you have any help to your neck or your shoulders, I would advise a small towel placed underneath your head so that you can have optimal neck alignment. So as we come down, our palms are going to be up and our elbows are going to be down. You're going to lift your hips and they're going to tap them fairly rapidly up and down. As you're tapping, feel the vibration. Let go of thinking. Just press your heels and let that nourish your spine. This encourages bone health, but it also encourages a deep release of the muscles. Let everything go. Take a moment to pause and relax. Let one leg go long. The leg that's bent, you're doing a simple press through that foot, reaching the knee away from you. This is very small, but you take ease in your hip joints. You want to make it as small as you can, and you want to breathe as you're doing this simple movement. Let's try that two more times. See if you can have a sense of rolling the pelvis. So I'm working my right leg in the bent knee position, and I'm rolling my left side pelvis. I'm able to do this simply without any pain, and I'm able to keep the breath going, opening up the front psoas and the muscles in the front body. Let that leg go out the side and return long. Let your left leg or your other leg come up. Same idea here. You're going to push to the foot, let that hip rise up, allowing the weight to shift to the opposite pelvis. Be sure you're still breathing. So a good time to breathe would be when you're down and you can exhale when you're up. And keep in mind, this isn't necessarily a stretch. It's a re-education of your hip muscles and an opportunity to create new pathways between the brain and the muscles. So you don't have to stretch them for it to work. In fact, staying just before the stretch can often be helpful. Let that leg move out the side and go long. Now you're going to dig your heels into your mat and you're going to bring up a vibration into your whole skeleton here. If you can notice your whole body has the possibility of moving all the way up to your head. So another way to connect the whole body, to tension the whole body, and to find that vibration in yourself. Let those knees come up. Take a moment and pause. We're going to bring our arms out to the side, and we're going to roll both arms forward. We're going to roll both arms back. Roll both arms forward. Roll both arms back. Now this time, if you roll them forward and back, notice the quality of that movement and how they're feeling. Relax completely. Press into your feet. Come up into a mini bridge, pulling your heels back. Drop your chin a bit here and roll yourself right back down. Let's try that again. So our arms are wide, we're pressing the elbows perhaps, and we're letting the hips come up and drop down. Slowly let your hips come down, let your spine come down and rest. Now 
let those arms do a simple roll back. Keep doing them roll back. Let your hips come up. Slowly. Let your hips come down, but keep your arms roll back, returning the arms. Let's roll the arms back. Let the hips rise up. Your chin is dropped. Keep the arms roll back. This helps differentiate your shoulders and your neck muscles, your spine. Let it come back. Let's try that one more time. Press into the heels. Roll those arms back to the best of your ability. Gaze is down. And we're going to super slowly bring it back, relax. Roll your arms forward, roll your arms backward again. Forward and back. Draw your right leg in, give it a nice hug if you drop your chin. Hold your right knee with your right hand and just draw a small circle, very small. Keep it as small as you can so you're working just through your hip joints and you're benefiting your back here as well. Let's take it the other direction, same idea. Releasing any tension you may be feeling in your hips and your back. Now let that leg come up, hold your hamstring somewhere, pointing in flexion. Now there should be no pain or no strain as you're doing this. You should be breathing in and breathing out. Let's try that one more time. If you'd like to try a small circle for range of motion to your ankle, that would be great. And we'll go the other way. Same idea. Let's bring that leg down. Try the same sequence as your other leg. Dropping the chin, allow the knee to come towards you, lengthening your back. Let your left hand hold your left knee and just let that circular action come right into your hip socket on that side. Make it smaller and smaller. You will open up your hip joints, allowing some freedom in the hips, and that will help align your back as well. Keep that breathing going at all times. This will work with a three-part breath, ujjayi breath, or your normal natural breath. It's just important to know that you are indeed breathing so you're focused and paying attention. Let your leg come up, point and flex the foot. And we're working on that ease in the body and that quality of calm in your mind here. Circle. Circle the other way. We're gonna let that leg come down. We're gonna draw both legs up and we're just gonna circle both our knees inward. Hold your kneecaps here, that helps hydrate them, bring some synovial fluid to them, bring in some, release some tension around the joint. Many of us hold tension in our legs, especially our lower legs. We stand on them, we walk on them, obviously they need to be working, but we also need to keep them so they can turn off. Draw your knees in a little closer and rock to one side, push off that elbow, rock to the other side, push off that elbow. Let's try that one more time. Each side, rocking and rolling, and we come back to the breath where we'll finish up. So we're gonna let the breath fill the lower belly, and we're gonna let the abdominals draw right in as we exhale, and as we exhale. We're gonna try that three times. Breath fills the lower belly, and we draw it in, 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 with a nice elongated exhale. One more time. Now we go to the sides of the ribs. We expand wide into the side ribs and we let the ribs knit towards each other. Expanding wide to the side ribs and we let the ribs come a little closer, exhaling, exhaling, exhale. Always emphasizing a little bit of elongation on our exhale. We bring the hands to the upper chest we let the chest expand. We try to get the breath all the way up those upper lows. Breathing in. Lower belly draws in on our exhale. Two more. And last time. Nice and wide chest expansion. Open the upper lobes of the lungs. Up. 
You may want to take a few moments for a little Shavasana, quieting your mind, noticing your body, watching your thoughts, becoming a witness, and using your midriff to your practice. As you're ready, roll yourself up to a couple seated positions. 